In this tutorial, what we're going to cover is creating a popular web network animation that seems to be used a lot in the motion graphics industry, and here's what it looks like. So you can see that we also have some depth of field going on, and we will cover how to do that as well. Let's jump right into it and get started. In Modeler, I'm going to draw out a ball, and open up the numeric panel, and let's make it a tessellated sphere and decrease the segments to about two. We can X out of that, drop the tool, and now what I wanna do is switch to edge mode by hitting the space bar, and you can see if you look up here in the upper left-hand corner of the interface, by tapping the space bar, we are cycling through the different selection modes. So in edge mode, select all the edges, control C to copy them. Let's switch to the second layer and paste them. Back in polygon mode, we'll switch to the first layer and delete it. And then let's cut those edges out of there and paste them into the first layer. So what we just did there, if we open up the polygon statistics window by hitting the W key, is we created two point vertices. So there are no more tri-polygons in the scene, just the edges. Another thing we can do is give this a bit of randomness by using jitter. So if we hit Shift J, we can use the type Gaussian, and let's set the radius to about 2 meters on all the axes. And you can see that that just moves all the points around and gives it a bit of randomness. In the second layer, let's put the first layer in the background, and let's create a tiny ball. I'm going to draw out a box and center that. Shift D to subdivide it, metaform is fine, and then hit the tab key to put subpatches on. Let's size it down, go into Action Center Selection, and this is going to be the ball that represents the intersecting points. Let's go into the Layers panel, and we'll name the first layer Web, and the second layer Ball. Okay. We can even assign a surface to this. Let's call it web as well. And again for the ball, ball. That'll just help with organization purposes once we get into layout by actually naming the layers. And we're ready to jump into layout. The first thing I want to do is select our web, go into the properties, and we're going to add an instance generator to it. The object I want to add is the ball, and the type is going to be points. If we switch it to a shaded solid mode, you can see that we have one instance right here. And if we automatically check max points, it's going to instance them around the amount of points that are on our web network. So already we have kind of what we're going for. I'm going to set the scale to uniform and decrease the size a little bit. That looks okay. Another thing I want to do is hide our original sphere from the scene so that it doesn't show up in our renders. To do that, we can go to our scene editor, and let's set the OpenGL to hidden, and you can see it disappears. And then let's uncheck this right here so that it doesn't show up in our render. You can see if we switch to VPR, you can still see it, but if we toggle this off and on, it will disappear. So let's keep it off for now and switch to our camera mode by hitting the 6 key. Just zoom in a little bit. I'm going to hit Control F5 and set our backdrop color to pure white. And let's just do a bit of surfacing here. I'm going to shift click on one of the balls to open up the surface editor with that object selected. And let's set the color to pure black. And also for the web, set that to pure black as well. Now to get this thing moving, what we're going to do is add a displacement map onto the web network. So let's switch back to OpenGL Texture Shaded Solid, hit the 4 key to go into Perspective, and we're going to use a null to be a reference object for the displacement map we're going to put on here. So hit Control N to add a null, call it Controller, and if we toggle down this Edit menu here, we can change the shape to a ball and label this 
controller. Let's hit OK. Now you can see we can easily select it. So with the web network selected, I'm going to hit P for properties. Let's move it over here. And under the deform tab, we're going to add a displacement map. The layer type is going to be a procedural texture and the reference object is going to be that controller. So now if we move the controller, you can see that we're already getting some movement and all we have to do at this point is just finesse a few of the settings to get the results that you're looking for. The default settings may work fine, but sometimes what I like to do is just increase the texture value to make the animation a bit more drastic. And you can even lower the, uh, the opacity so that it doesn't move as much. Okay, maybe we'll just even it out at 50 and use texture. Now what we can do is go to frame 120 and move our controller over here. Let's go back to frame zero, move it back a little bit. Now if we hit play, you'll see that we're getting the animation that we are looking for. Let's set our camera up, get a better angle here. Another thing I like to do is go into the camera properties and give the camera a low focal length, something like 15 millimeters. And then dolly it in. That'll give it a bit more of a fisheye look. Now let's put some depth of field on this and control it with a null. So let's add a null, call it depth of field target. In the camera properties, we're going to go to the depth of field tab and turn it on. And using this arrow right here, let's turn depth of field motion blur preview on in OpenGL. So now if we adjust the f-stop, you can see that we can see it in OpenGL. Create an envelope in the focal distance. And under modifiers, we're going to add the proximity modifier. Let me raise it up here so you can see it. Proximity. Double click on it, and the item is going to be self, the camera, and the target is going to be our depth of field target controller that we made. So let's X out of that. I'm going to switch my viewport to a, let's see here, one left, two right, just so I can move that depth of field target around a little easier. Let's see here. So if I move it closer to the camera, it's our camera right there. I'm gonna put it right on that sphere in the front. And let's raise it up a little bit right there. Let's go into our camera properties and let's adjust the f-stop. There you go. So you can see now that most of the spheres in the front are in focus, whereas the spheres in the back are out of focus. And if we grab that depth of field target and move it to one of the points in the back of the web network, you can see that the camera's depth of field will automatically adjust. So let's move it back to the front. And I wanna talk about the actual edges of this web network. So let's select it and open up the properties. And if we turn on VPR, you can see that our particle line thickness under the edges tab is one pixel. We can increase it to five, but what's happening is that these are flat shaded cylinders. So if I turn on OpenGL overlay and I push this back in Z space, you can see that the edges eventually will all conform together. But if I use negative pixels, so let's say I put in negative 0 0.02. In LightWave 11.5 plus, the negative thickness of edges defines the thickness in meters instead of screen space. So if I push these back into Z space now, you can see that the edges will not all shrink together. So negative 0 0.02 seems to be working fairly nicely. Let's go ahead and turn off OpenGL overlay. And before I finish this tutorial, I just wanted to show one other cool technique. Let's shift click on one of the spheres and we can actually surface each one of these independently using a gradient. To do that, let's check the nodes 
and then open it up. And what we're going to add is an instance info and then a gradient. And we're going to put the fixed random into the input and the color into the color of the surface. Open up that gradient. And let's adjust the first key. You can see that they all turn red. Add a few more and just start changing the color. Can add as many keys as you'd like. We have one more right here. And let's distribute all of them. And now you can see that we have used this gradient to control the surface on these walls. If we scrub through, you can see that we still have our animation working nicely. Let's get out of VPR and play through that. So before I finish this tutorial, let's just take a look at what the final render will look like. In the surface editor, I just want to make sure that smoothing is turned on for the balls. And in the camera properties, let's change the maximum samples to something fairly high since we have um, a fairly low f-stop. Change it to say 128 and render frame. And there you have it. So it looks pretty cool. I hope you guys learned a lot in this tutorial and I will see you in the next one.